This video is about my image comp program which runs on Raspberry Pi computers and uses a camera module to capture stills and save interesting pictures. Now I have to mention there's also something called MotionEye which is much more developed than my program but it operates on video and video image quality on a Raspberry Pi is always much lower than still image quality. So my program captures a still image with the camera module although it can capture up to 4 per second and then analyzes for changes and saves what's interesting. I'll talk about the image browsing part of this thing first because that's actually much more fun. So I'll pop up the uh, browser interface on my workshop camera. So here we are in the day view and we've got little ASCII graphs for every hour here so nothing happened around midnight, 1am, etc. until about here and if I hover over any of these little character things this is essentially a uh, character graph of how much activity was where in an hour and as I hover over those, the preview below shows me roughly what was happening there. And if I click on any of these, if I click on this right now, that takes me to that image in the uh, series of images that was recorded. And now if I do a mouse drag from around the center of the image, it's like scrubbing back and forth through a video. I can also just have the video played, or the series of images played through. Or I can play it backwards by holding the mouse down on the left side. Or back frame at a time by just clicking on it or on the right side and play forward. And uh, down here I can uh, navigate to the uh, next directory or the previous directory. So here is me uh, getting the camera out and recording the first segment uh, of this very video. And if I want to save one of these images, I can drag it out of the window, but I have to click near the top center of the image because the other areas are active. And I can just drag that over onto my desktop. Or if I am using a tablet or something like that and I want to save one of these images, I can click Save down here. Let's save this one too. And then if I go to the Save directory, that shows me all the images that I've saved this month. And here's those two images that I have, in fact, saved. Other features I've got here, I have the Enlarge button, and that enlarges the view to one-to-one -one of the image, which depending on the size of the monitor is something I may or may not want. Uh, and I can go back from that by clicking the back button because the property of the view is always in the URL. If I uh, scrub back and forth in, in the uh, images here, you can see the URL always updates. So that uh, if I take this URL, that'll take me right there. The only downside of that is now if I scrub back and forth, that uh, fills up my browser history so that uh, it doesn't go back to the previous directory, it goes to the previous image. Another feature I've got is to brighten the image, which in this case doesn't do anything because this image doesn't need brightening. But let's go back to here, and I have time lapse configured so it takes one photo every hour regardless of whether there was motion. So we go to this image and you can see it's all black. So we turn on the brighten and that will scale the brightness values until some areas, such as this post here and the workbench, get close to saturation. So that can be very useful if I've got a camera outside at night and I want to see if there is anything happening because mostly the image is all black. And in here, if I click on different parts of this, uh, this takes me to the directory. Actually, this is the thumbnail view now. Um, if I click on here, that takes me to the date. And let's go to where there is more activity. And then I can either click on here or on here, the thumbnails view. And that shows me thumbnails of all the different things that happen in here. I actually implemented this first. And I implemented the uh, browser where I can flip through things uh, later on, which I actually like much more. In here, because I've got so many images, I'm actually only displaying every nth thumbnail, depending on how many images I've got. Um, so there's one image, and that was taken at 10.44 and 44 seconds in. I've got another image at 45, 46, 47, and 48 seconds, which I don't have thumbnails view here for. And then for 49, I've got the thumbnail again. So if I just click on this one here, the uh, 47, that takes me at what the image was at this time. But a feature that uh, I really like quite a lot is the actogram view, which I can get from here, but let's go back to the date first. Oh. So that shows the day again, today, and for every hour I get a bit of an actogram for what happened there. So what I call the actogram is basically showing one hour here, and if there's a symbol here, that means there is activity in 
that set of minutes. Each character here is uh, several minutes. And then, of course, if I click on the hour, that gives me a little actogram for that hour. Or I can click on actogram for a whole bunch of time. This shows me the actogram for the last few days. And if I hover over any of these, that shows me what I was doing at that particular time. So on the uh, 6, 06, 17, so on the 17th of June, I was building a jig for an experiment uh, for wood shrinkage, which I haven't published yet. Um, here, I was building a lens mount for a Raspberry Pi camera, and uh, I published a video on that uh, last week. This is my impact driver video filming here. So you can see most of the activity in the workshop is actually filming stuff. Uh, and lately there hasn't been that much activity in the workshop, mostly because of the new baby. So that really cuts down on the time I have available. And you can see here there was quite a lot of activity. And if I click on that, um, that was working on the nightstands. Um, so I had uh, quite a bit of uh, contiguous shop time to work on those. And I can also click on all here, and that pops up the actogram for all available time. That is rather slow because the backend has to go through all the images that I've recorded to construct this actogram. So it takes quite a while to come up. So by default, it only goes back about a month or so. And this is actually still loading. And there, it's got the rest of it. So again, not as much activity in the last month or so partially because of baby, partially because of pandemic. Um, here is, that's the start of the pandemic, and uh, we're keeping very much to ourselves at this time, and no daycare or school, kids home, so not as much time in the workshop, but before that, I had a good amount of time. And then here, it gets sparse again. This is around Christmas time, uh, which was also not a good time to uh, spend time in the workshop because the kids were home. And then in the fall, I had more time, and then as we get further back, this is getting more towards the summer. I had less time to spend in the workshop. So I find this a very useful tool just for myself to get a sense of how much time I've spent in the workshop. Not that uh, counting the hours really makes a difference because I'm not billing any time. But if I was, I think this would be a really useful tool. So now how to set this software up. I've got a uh, flashcard with the latest Raspberry Pi OS on it. And I'll just put that in there and boot it up. The easiest way to get it is just to clone it off of GitHub using this command. And now we've already got there. So now we go into the image comp directory that was just created. And in here we have a directory called setup. And in here we have several files. We have setting up that text, which tells us how to set it up. But I'll just go through and explain the various steps. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install uh, libjpeg and Apache 2. And we do that by running install packages, which we need to run as root. So uh, we do sudo. And I'm running that sped up a bit because it takes a minute or so. Now that we have the necessary packages, I can start setting it up. So uh, and that compiles the image comp program as well as the browse program. And it also creates the necessary directories uh, and stuff like that here for setting up the browsing as well. Now we still need to set up a few things that require root publish, so we run, and that creates the RAM disk and also sets up Apache 2. And now things are actually set up to automatically run at startup, but uh, let's launch it manually. And now it's actually running and acquiring images, so now I'll need to run past the camera a little bit. And now if I browse the IP address of that Raspberry Pi, and pop up view.cgi and now clicking on here and panning through here there's me in front of the camera and as i've been recording this video i keep finding things in the software that i want to tweak a little bit and that's an ongoing sort of thing whenever i feel like it i add more features to it because it's just kind of fun but unfortunately it does take up a lot of time so the software is what it is now i will improve it more over time but I figured I need to make a video about it sooner or later, and that's the state of it right now.